Hey there, I'm Sarita, and you're about to experience the modern approach to well-being where you get to establish the best and most important relationship you will ever have, the one with yourself. I'm on a mission to help you declutter energy and reclaim your power so you can be a magnet to what you desire. If you're looking for the optimal blend of mindset and healing, you're in the right place. My goal in this podcast is to share tools, resources, and practices that will help you along your healing journey. I'm so excited to be here with you today. So welcome to Back to Here with Sarita. Let's get started. Hello, love, and welcome to this podcast that I bring to you every other Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. A new episode of Back to Here with Sarita drops. I absolutely love this podcast and it's my baby. It's my creative loving outlet that I love to share with you, my listeners. So thank you so much for being here. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Sarita, and I always love giving a warm welcome to the new folks that pass through and find my podcast. I love being a podcast host, and apart from that, I'm also a coach. I like calling myself a soul care mindset and empowerment coach. So that means that I love anything that has to do with the journey of healing oneself, like self-love, emotional wellness, spirituality, manifestation, mindset, just to name a few. And I have been on my own personal healing journey for the last two some years now, And so this podcast is basically a mecca for all things that are personal in my personal growth and healing journey, which actually leads me to today's episode's topic. This is part two of the two-part series where I've been sharing with you the emotions and feelings that I've experienced during and after my breakup. And honestly, it's taken a little bit of courage for me to share this part of my life life like up front with you because it's one of those things that I feel like we don't really share that often in public. I I think that people keep their breakups in the quiet confines of their home and their minds and emotions and apart from sharing them with like friends and family, we don't really talk about these kind of things. And I'm also, so the flip side of that is I'm also a true believer that when we share and speak about something that may be essentially uncomfortable, in speaking on it, it makes it less scary and overwhelming than it really is. There's been a lot that's happened over the last two years and a lot of it has been the internal work and the healing that is done with myself to mend from the heartbreak. If you haven't had a chance to listen to the last episode of this two-part series, I recommend you do so. So that way you know a little bit more about me and my story and as I dive deeper into the post-breakup part of my story. One of the points that I shared last week that I've been reflecting on and I've been thinking about this week a lot is the choice that we have after a breakup. We have a choice either to repeat the same pattern by you know jumping into another relationship going from person to person like manifesting the same like relationship over and over again the heartbreak like the you know the other things that come up or we have the option of breaking the habit of thinking that we were unlovable in the first place by doing the inner work. I believe when our world gets disrupted or thrown off, it's such a wonderful opportunity for us to check in with ourselves. Let's think of like outside of the context of a breakup, maybe perhaps like the loss of a job. It's also an opportunity. Of course, the initial response can be of like panic because our nervous system is so accustomed to having something stable. And then the rug was like literally pulled out from under us. But I still believe that after the calm, like after we calm down from the initial shock of it all, that it's a perfect opportunity for us to reassess what's valuable and important to us in that moment. I believe our value comes from the energy we bring to every situation. Okay, let's jump into the details of the episode. I shared with you in the last episode that dropped two weeks ago that It was through coming to the point of admittance and acceptance that I was able to take the next step to break off my eight-year relationship. 
it was having like this really deep level of compassion for myself through the whole process that provided me the stepping stones for the next chapter of my life. What I didn't realize in that moment, the moment that I decided, the moment that I chose myself, that the universe was on my side delivering everything exactly for me that I needed for the next two years of my life that I would need the most courage and ongoing, I might mention, not just the last two years, but ongoing, that I would need the most courage, vulnerability, and rawness that I ever experienced in my life. Although I manifested a harmonious detanglement for my relationship, it didn't go without a lot of sadness, loss, and guilt. And so it was after I moved out, unfortunately for all parties involved, it only took I think like two months for me to find a place. I was hoping that I was going to feel liberated and free and all the things, but honestly I felt quite the opposite. And I have this memory, and it wasn't that long ago, it was a little less than two years ago, that after I moved everything into my new place, I was sitting in my room and I was surrounded by boxes and I sat in the middle of the floor and I cried my eyes out because it was literally my life had been upturned and I was creating this brand new life for myself and there were so many emotions that were going on and I remember sitting in the middle of the room surrounded by boxes crying just thinking to myself what the heck is next like what did I just do and what the heck is next next and it was this feeling of like deep despair and desire for wanting to actually feel good again I thought how am I ever supposed to feel good again and I was so deep in those emotions at that moment and looking back at it retrospectively I know that I was right exactly where I needed to be like releasing those emotions releasing the things that were coming up So I spent a good few weeks trying to create a safe and secure and peaceful environment for myself that was loving and very, very uplifting. What it was that I desired for myself was exactly that, that uplifting and loving environment in a place where I could just be. So I truly believe it's important for us to structure ourselves in a way to set ourselves up for success, whatever that feels like and feels good for you. So this leads me to the part of the episode where I want to share with you three things that I did to help me through the post-breakup process. Again, if you know someone personally who has broken up or has been broken up with or has talked about possibly breaking up, please make sure to share this episode with them. It will be very supportive and you are a better friend because of it. Okay, so starting with number one, I kind of mentioned one of the things I did off the bat that was helpful for me post-breakup, and luckily I was in the position where I could do that. I intentionally set up my space for what best would support me. I did that. I decided I wanted to create a space for myself with was not only comfortable, but how I wanted to feel. So reflected already in my environment how I wanted to feel. So if you follow me on social media or know me personally, I really love light pastel type colors, the spring soft colors. And for me, they evoke this feeling of like soothing, soft, flirty, and feminine. Something that I desired to embody, a part of me that I felt like that I had really put on the back burner and almost felt like I completely forgot about or lost. So in creating my space, I chose colors, moods and feelings that embody the person I desired to be or stand for. So I set my room up with pastel colors, green plants to bring joy and freshness, flowers to my like remind me of spring because I literally felt like I was dead emotional winter inside. I created an altar with crystals and candles for my prayers and desired manifestations and a lot of blankets. So the next thing I did was I decided that I wanted to show myself compassion, which came in the form of pouring a lot of self-care energy into my daily life. That came in the form of sleeping a lot. That was taking hot baths. That was journaling, keeping to myself, aka 
kind of being a hermit in my room for like hours and sometimes even days at a time. I loved myself often through practices of like holding myself, you know, like hugging yourself, like wrapping your arms around yourself or even through self-massage. And I made sure to take care of my body by slowing way down. I think the last part was the most challenging form because like many of us, I've been wired to go, go, go and be a total go-getter. And so I actually utilized my breakup as kind of an excuse to unsubscribe from that constant need to be doing something just to be doing something. And what that often looked like was just me staring out the window, not even really thinking about anything, but just literally being And I want to take a moment that I do acknowledge that not everyone has the capacity to slow down as much as they desire to, meaning I acknowledge that my privilege and ability to have hours and hours of time to myself to heal um, is very unique, meaning I don't have any children, obviously don't have a significant other, so I have that capacity too. So not everybody has the same lifestyle as I do, but it is a reminder that it is in those moments like taking a shower, sipping your coffee in the morning, getting into the car before work, or even as we like get into bed to slow down and take a really, really deep breath. One of the biggest and most monumental things I did post breakup was to focus on my healing. And I'm not just saying healing my broken heart because even though I was the one who ended the relationship, there was still so much heartache. No, when I mean focusing on my healing, I was healing from the woman that I had become. So I got introduced to the world of the subconscious back in 2020, but it wasn't until 2021 that I dove a little bit deeper into what that actually meant. Although I studied it on a very like conceptual level over well over a year, it really wasn't until after my breakup in about like mid 2021 that I started to really understand how it affected me in my personal life. Meaning, once I started to break down the layers of the woman who I had constructed myself to believe that I needed to be or to operate as, I realized that identity no longer served me. So basically the woman who I showed up in my life, my whole entire life, was a heartbroken woman. I was attempting to get validation, attention, and love through very unhealthy avenues. So most recently, for years in my relationship, I operated from the place of a victim. So I really thought that I was the woman who was always saying and doing the right thing and that just nobody was listening to me and nobody was understanding me. What I didn't realize is that I was the woman that was not taking ownership for her actions, didn't show up in her relationship nor her life. And what occurred was the most, in the most visual way that I can explain, was that I was taking that old foundation and demolishing it. Basically, the old operating system, just think of like a computer, the old operating system that was, you know, submitted and and created from the beginning, I completely destroyed. So the operating system that had been used for the last 41 years was no longer serving me. And I got to tell you, that was deep, ugly work. When I realized how much I had shown up as a victim in my life for so long, it was a fucking sobering moment. I felt so shitty. I felt really, really shitty, y'all. Like, I remember looking in the mirror and being like, wow. In fact, I went to the extent to call my ex and I had a conversation with him, letting him know that I was taking ownership of a lot of the things that I had said and did along the way that I didn't acknowledge or recognize before. In that moment, I believe I was actually looking for some level of forgiveness from him, even though I was showing up desiring to have a conversation to take ownership I also believe there was some level of desire to get forgiveness from him, but in reality, I needed to forgive myself. So the path to deconstructing the layers was like peeling back an onion. Like the deeper I went, the more that I saw. 
And so I saw how my belief system was so deeply rooted in this lack of worth and lack of self-love. It was realizing that my adoption at the tender age of three basically planted the seed in my life that I felt like I was never enough. And so I ended up showing up as this person that pushed people away in order to not get hurt. I noticed that I had this deep debilitating case of people pleaser syndrome because I was so terrified of making people unhappy or upset with me. That is such a repercussion or I should say a manifestation of uh, people that have people pleaser. So let me know if you relate to that. I realized that a lot of it came from like these deep-seated beliefs came from the need to control the need for control stemmed from the severe lack of belief that things were not working in my favor. And basically it was a trauma response in order to not get hurt. Like we control in order to not get hurt. And with all these things, peeling back the layers, it was like my life was unfolding in front of my eyes. Like I saw how these behaviors and patterns and beliefs played out through my entire life. It was just so shocking. I realized it was no wonder that I'd become someone who was angry, sad, frustrated, unhappy, who ended up partying a lot in order to forget my woes and basically to avoid. That's really what I was doing. So how did this manifest into my life? I was stressed out AF. My body was anxious. I was constantly losing and gaining weight. I had like severe chest pains, digestive issues, sleep deprivation, panic attacks. I mean, you name it, I had it. Between the years of 2013 to 2018, I was dealing with awful insomnia. It affected my life so heavily within my relationship and my work. And at the time, I seriously thought that my body just needed sleep. But I know now, because of the healing I've done and the more conceptual knowledge I have around healing is that our body has a level of ancient wisdom that we completely ignore. I've mentioned this in other podcast episodes. We have been socially conditioned to be in our heads instead of listening to our body. And I was certainly ignoring my body, literally screaming at me, not only to slow down, but to reassess my whole damn life and my belief systems. Our bodies hold a lot of trauma through our nervous system. And once our nervous system is deregulated, we are literally in fight mode, which means our subconscious is basically telling our body that we are running away from something, like being scared of being attacked, like pushing us to like safety. So our body is literally saying that we're in danger. Our nervous system is such a point of creating our realities. So the last and final step in the post breakup process that has been absolutely monumental for my recovery is forgiveness. And it is something that I remain doing on the constant. It's not something that you just do on one time thing. It's a constant forever, forever practice. Forgiveness simply is a choice. It's less than a feeling. It creates a feeling But forgiveness is simply a choice. The most intriguing thing about forgiveness that I think is really, really cool is that it has absolutely nothing to do with the other person. Just think of the opposite side, the opposing side of forgiveness. It's bitterness or resentment. And those feelings, and I like to kind of think of them as energies, are really low vibration and kind of heavy to carry around. In fact, they cloud our energy severely and make us really unhappy people. So why carry that load? Practicing forgiveness has become a little more easy as time goes on. Just kind of like that that muscle gets uh, exercised. I remember going through a breathwork session where I decided to unpack the first layer of forgiving myself. And I literally cried straight for 90 minutes during that practice. And it was because there was, a lot, there was a lot of clouded energy that I was holding on to. And you can bet that I was so exhausted after that session, letting go of all that heavy 
weight. So apart from breath work, I have been practicing a forgiveness meditation that I usually do like three to four times a week called Ho'oponopono. It's originally Hawaiian and it's the act of becoming Pono or back to a place of complete peace with no attachments to anything or anyone. And it's a great place to start if you're new to forgive, you know, forgiveness techniques. It's a way to energetically cut the cord from someone or something. Like I mentioned, forgiveness is totally a decision. We decide to give ourselves grace and let go of the invisible weight we're carrying around in the form of like shame or guilt. And we can energetically cut the cord from the version of ourselves that decided to hold that grudge, animosity, bitterness, resentment in the first place. And when we do that, soon enough, that decision becomes a feeling. So there's no like emotional weight anymore. And honestly, it's really liberating to finally let go. And I really want that for you every single day. So just to recap, the few things that I did post-breakup is I chose to create a loving and safe environment for myself. I quite literally broke up the foundation to create a new one. And I also broke up and said goodbye to the version of myself that operated in the pl- in that place to begin with. And I also came from a place of being very extremely compassionate to myself and forgiving myself for doing all the things in the first place. I really hope that these points have been helpful to you or to that someone in your life who perhaps is going through something similar. It feels really good to have shared this with you. Like I mentioned in the first part of the episode, I really was a little hesitant about opening up about my relationship and the process that occurred during and after. So I'm sharing this story and experience because I know the power of sharing our voice. And honestly, it was because of one person that I greatly admire sharing her openness about her divorce and choosing herself on social media that empowered me in that moment to know what I needed to do next. And also, I realized that I did the same thing for somebody that I personally know in that moment that I shared with them that I was breaking off my relationship. It gave that woman permission to do the same thing. So I desire to provide that to you as well. Not the permission part, but that you know that you are the permission set for yourself that you can and deserve to live the life that you desire in alignment and in love with yourself every single day. Okay, dear, thank you so much for being here today. I'm sending you so much love and good energy. Have a wonderful rest of your day and keep being the amazing you that you are. Hey, love. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you adored what you heard, It would mean the world to me if you took a moment to leave a review on the platform you are listening to this episode on. By doing this, you are helping my mission to impact other women with their healing journeys. If you aren't already following me on social media, make sure to connect with me at Sarita Wellness to get your weekly dose of inspiration. I can't wait to be with you in the next episode, but in the meantime, keep being the amazing you that you are.